Ramsey County Board of Commissioners to order for June 7th. Uh, roll call, please. Carter. Here. Bradham. Here. McDonough. Here. McGuire. Here. Ortega. Hi. Reinhardt. Here. And Mata Cecile. Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we will turn to Commissioner McGuire for our land acknowledgement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will, some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life, and some have lived on this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are crucial to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We are standing on the ancestral lands of the Dakota people. We want to acknowledge the Ojibwe, the Ho-Chunk, and the other nations of people who also called this place home. We pay respects to their elders, past and present. Please take a moment to consider the treaties made by the tribal nations that entitle non-native people to live and work on traditional native lands. Consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. We have the agenda of June 7, 2022 presented for approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing on roll call, please. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Aye. Bradham? Aye. McDonough? Aye. And Mata Cecile? Aye. We have the minutes from May 24th, 2022 presented for approval. Move approval. We have a motion, second, and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Aye. Bradham? Aye. McDonough? Aye. And Mata Castillo? Aye. We'll turn to Commissioner McGuire for our administrative items. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move item number three, the terms of collective bargaining agreement with law enforcement labor services, number 349, emergency communication center 911, telecommunicators and dispatchers for the years 2022, 23, and 24. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Aye. Bradham? Aye. McDonough? Aye. And Maris Castillo? Aye. We have one ordinance procedure, that's the Ramsey County Smoking and Commercial Tobacco Use Ordinance. We have the first reading and set the public hearing date. Public hearing date will be June 28, 2022 at 9 a.m. Uh, here in the court, uh, or as soon as possible thereafter, in the council chambers, third floor of the Ramsey County Courthouse. Is there a motion? Move first, uh, waiving first reading and setting the public hearing date. Second. Thank you. We have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes. Madam Chair. County Manager. Thanks, Madam Chair. Just by way of reminder, because it's been a little bit of time on the arc here, this all stems back to a workshop that began with the Parks Department, I'm going to say it was 12 months ago, uh, during which time in that 21st century parks conversation, park ordinance, many things were discussed. And we had previously have had a tobacco ordinance always within our parks system. And then we'd have a second tobacco ordinance run by public health. At the time, there was an interest expressed. Uh, from staff and then uh, seconded by the board to move to one countywide tobacco ordinance in one place moving forward. This formalizes that and I want to uh, thank the board for giving public health and parks time to work on this. We had some pandemic waves to work through first and now we are back for the first of those ordinance readings. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. We will move to a roll call, please. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Aye. Bradham? Aye. 
McDonough? Aye. And Modest Castillo? Aye. Uh, we'll turn to Commissioner McGuire for a legislative update. Thank you, Madam Chair. The legislature is uh, out of session now, and we're hoping that they uh, reach some agreement so they can go into special session, but we're not sure that that will happen, being that there's an election coming up in, in the fall. But um, we are, we really have a lot of things still left on the table at our, at our, in our legislature, and so just hopeful that they'll come together. So we're, I think there's conversations going on, and um, we're continuing to talk to legislators about our, our needs that were not uh, passed. Some of them were passed, but they didn't make it through both bodies and to the governor. So uh, that's my update, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Uh, next, we'll move to County Connections. County Manager O'Connor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, I have uh, just one update today. In um, June 6th was the onset of phase two of Ramsey County's flexible workplace policy implementation. So we're through two of those initial three phases. Uh, this phase focused mainly on the service teams of information and public. You may recall phase one focused specifically on the strategic team for the most part, as well as formally bringing all full-time on-site or full-time community embedded employees into the fold. Uh, phase two is focused on information and public records areas, some of the safety and justice service team, as well as the economic growth and community investment team. To give you a sense of the departments, parks and recreation, public works, property management, libraries, economic growth, community investment administration, office of information and public records and finance, information services, enterprise and admin services, medical examiner, emergency management, homeland security, and emergency communication center. So we have moved through phase two. Uh, never easy going through a phase in, uh, in the buildup to implementation. Lots of questions. Thanks to the entire flexible work team who ran a series of workshops with staff, took questions, and continued to respond in real time. Um, phase three is tentatively slated for somewhere in the beginning or middle of August. The real goal since the beginning has been to try to get through it by Labor Day. We are continuing to look at phase three, learn from phase one and two, also realizing we're upgrading a lot of workspaces in real time and we won't have that fully done by the fall. So we may have some further conversation about what it all comes together and looks like, but honestly, we needed to get through phase two first. So uh, that's all I have, Madam Chair, but big news and thanks to all the employees who are coming back in our new work environments. Great, thank you very much. Then we'll move on to our outside board and committee reports, starting with Commissioner Ortega. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, two things. Number one is the uh, took a tour of the High Bridge and Highland uh, Development Project, uh, and uh, it's coming along. Uh, there are there are phases of it that have already been invested in, and those are being completed. Uh, looked at the affordable housing units. They don't go as deep as we we uh, we advocate for, but still, it's. Uh, does fill a niche in the marketplace. The amenities to the, to the place in terms of parks and things and other amenities are really are really good. Uh, I was impressed uh, by the, uh, they have, I don't know what you would call it, like a, a stream running through the property, mm -hmm. which makes it look very um, different than most of our parks. Uh, the other thing I think is that we had, and others will speak to this, uh, our energy and recycling board meeting, and that, that's going along well, and we're moving forward on the vision of the two counties. That's, that's it, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner Fredham. Yeah, so it, last week was uh, Children's Mental Health Week, I guess. I had the Ramsey County Children's Mental Health Collaborative. We had a virtual retreat with the full board, which was virtual, but interactive, and they did a great job. Um, working with folks to get ideas and to refine the strategic plan uh, and look at some financial questions moving forward and how to use uh, unspent funds. Uh, and then I also had the state subcommittee on children's mental health where we continue to refine our recommendations for our annual report due out in October, but we're also pushing really hard to get that report out earlier so it can help inform uh, legislative platforms uh, and budget suggestions for the 2023 session. 
Also got to meet with the Gen X Early Childhood Committee. Uh, as, as I mentioned previously, we had a uh, written letter to the governor and also had a, an op-ed post uh, published in MinPost about uh, investments in early childhood ed with our unprecedented surplus. Of course, nothing happens, so we're um, in uh, planning stages for what we do next with our infrastructure investment suggestions on that. Um, and I think that's it, thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Reinhardt. Good morning. Thank you. Um, well, there's been a lot of uh, meetings that have been going on over the past two weeks, obviously. Um, but the, the, I guess the two, maybe three, that I'd like to report on is one is the Minnesota Geospatial Advisory Council. Um, and that one is really critical to, uh, well, it is about what it sounds like it's about, and that's mapping and data collection and making sure that we get the correct data in, which of course helps to um, inform all of our decisions. And so we have um, a, a really good working group um, from across the state. And I think, honestly, it's probably helped a little bit that we've had the virtual option mm -hmm. because we have all the members there. <laughs> and so it's, um, I, we've done a lot of really good work regarding um, getting the, um, uh, the boundaries and some of the things that we need to do, especially on the markings of the corner. Uh, okay, this is terrible because I've been with this group for a long time and I can't think of the real name for it. <laughs> but it's a monumentation, monumentation, that's what it is. And working through the capital on some of that issue, those issues as well. So it's a great group. Um, then also the Recycling and Energy Board and the Partnership on Waste and Energy met. And um, the Partnership on Waste and Energy is mostly about legislative positions and trying to make sure that we are um, going forward. There were, uh, one of the reports, and I know uh, Commissioner McGuire's talked about this, is there was a lot in about the environment, which didn't make it through. But <laughs> we got, you know, that happens, and I don't know if there's even the possibility of a special session at this uh, game, uh, place in the game, but anyway. Um, but one of the things that it does do is that it, it positions us for the next time. Mm -hmm. And the SCORE funding, the Select Committee on Recycling in the Environment, goes way back. I actually know what it stands for. Um, you know, I'm trying to get the money that has been going into the general fund, and it was meant to help with uh, the recycling environment within the state and working with the counties. And so we will... Um, Continue to work on that, but it was that um, was not great news just because of the the way the legislature ended. But good news in that a lot of really important environmental issues were thoroughly discussed and uh, decisions were made, and there was a lot of agreement mm -hmm. on the environmental things that needed to be done. If they just got it passed in the law, <laughs> <laughs> and then the recycling and energy board. I think this is a really exciting time for recycling and energy. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the kickoff, of course, of the compostable, uh, durable compostable bags um, in more of a pilot project. I mean, we did some of that on a very small scale, but really uh, ramping this up. We're also looking at um, the anaerobic digestion. We're looking at different technologies, which is what we said we were going to do and has not been an easy task because it's very complicated because there's so many moving parts to it. But uh, the operation at the facility is going great. Um, the, um, as with any uh, workplace right now, they're looking for employees and trying to get uh, more folks in there. But it's, um, we're, we're really headed in the right direction and I'm really proud of the work that the Recycling and Energy Board has been doing. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. Uh, Commissioner Carter. Thank you. Last week was a week out for me, but I was able to come back in and attend the and I Young annual powwow. I think it's their 23rd annual mm -hmm. celebration. It was at Lake Harriet Island, um, a great convening of a number of representatives from across the state, actually from across the nation, and honoring the children as a tradition that and I Young has kept up now for 23 years. Um, great display of all of the regalia and the presence of people on the on the island pavilion. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Commissioner McDonough. Okay. Uh, I'll just share quickly that, you know, it's clearly summer in St. Paul, 
sorry, Commissioner well, McGuire. No, no, that. Commissioner McGuire, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah, I did. Chair, I right? know. <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner. Sure <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the things I want to talk about yeah. include you, so you can follow up. I'm, I'm, I'll start out, but um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the past, uh, we we were um, out last week, so I'll just do a catch up a little bit. Um, the Suburban Ramsey Family Collaborative did meet in the, one of their quarterly meetings. Uh, we are doing great work there. Uh, I know that Commissioner. Fretham and I were both on the call, that rapid response training, which is a consolidated care team effort. It is just such a great effort where people can get uh, a rapid response to their needs, and it's just a great a program that we learned about. Also, um, AMC had their um, District 10 meeting, Commissioner Mattis Castillo, Commissioner McDonough, and County Manager O'Connor and I were all, all there, and I just wanna uh, thank Commissioner Mattis Castillo for doing such a great job in presenting uh, our issue on housing and homelessness. Uh, it was a great uh, program on Friday that uh, asked each county in the, you know, in District 10 to come with a, 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 something that they are proud of and something that they're working on, something that they'd like to share, something creative and innovative that they shared with the rest of the counties. I encourage you, I don't know if we take those meetings, but they were really interesting. We learned a lot from the other counties, but Commissioner Mattis Castillo presented on our efforts uh, to really um, move beyond homelessness into housing. And I would, you know, ask for you to comment further on that, Commissioner Mattis Castillo, because I thought you did a great job uh, presenting on that. Also, in AMC, our Association of Minnesota Counties, for those who are watching, uh, had a great uh, program on uh, or update on the opioid settlement. That was yesterday, actually. If you get a chance to listen to that webinar, it had uh, our Attorney General Keith Ellison, members of the Attorney General's team, members of um, the all of the teams that worked to get that, that uh, settlement together. And it's just such great background, great history, great update on where we go from here with the opioid settlement. So I encourage everyone, it was about an hour and a half, so um, just, Listen to that uh, to that tape uh, on the AMC website. Also, this Friday, uh, the Ramsey County League of Local Governments is having their uh, monthly meeting, and this week it will be on uh, a public safety update. And our county attorney John Choi is going to present on his efforts uh, to reduce violence. And um, I think that'll be a, a great meeting. As always, that's on Zoom, so it's easy to get to uh, 7:30 to 9 on Friday morning. And I know that. An, a number of us here uh, attend those meetings, and I know they really appreciate it when commissioners uh, are, are on those calls because it includes a lot of our city council and school board members. So, thank you, Madam Chair, and I yeah. encourage you to talk about the AMC meeting. <laughs> thank, oh, Madam thank Chair, you. one more yes, thing I forgot yes, to say. Please. I just want to say I did go to an event that I'd heard about um, through our county manager and through our parks director. Uh, it was an uh, an event that was ha taking place at one of our. Uh, ice arenas for Ramsey County, and it was a brown body um, ice skating show with dance, and it uh, tracing sacred steps. It was very powerful. Um, uh, I love ice skating and I love dance, and it was just a great um, uh, reflection of of work, uh, contemporary dance, and uh, it was about um, you know the struggle that our brown bodies have had, and um, it was uh, a really great presentation. So I encourage any time that you get a chance to go to one of their performances. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire, and thanks for your updates on the AMC meeting. I think you covered it all. I don't know much more I can add, but it was a good, it's good to learn from our peers across the region and, and see the engagement. Um, certainly our fellow counties are paying attention to what we're doing on housing and homelessness and, and take a good um, interest. Uh, and as you all know, we get our sit rep on homelessness each week, um, but I took a drive this morning on the way here and we're looking at a significant number of tents here in St. Paul, um, and we know that that's gonna spill over into other communities and our suburban communities and our other counties, and so um, we are 
we're managing it as best we could, but just to, for people to realize and to remember folks that want to assist or help, that if they're bringing items to people that are um, in tents outside, that they want to, one, provide a trash bag and make small uh, items that can be consumed easily and, and disposed of so we don't have stores of food and stuff that bring other pests, making that situation even more dangerous. Um, so it was a good presentation with AMC and also lots of learning from our other counties on some of the work that they're doing. A uh, couple other things. It's clearly summer in St. Paul in Ramsey County and there's festivals everywhere. Uh, to include our own, we had train days uh, this weekend at the depot. It was probably the best turnout I have seen in many years. Even pre-COVID, there was a lot of participation uh, there and people are really excited and excited about the second train. Um, to Chicago and people were saying, how soon can it start? And actually um, Amtrak was there and said, it could start early, it's ahead of schedule, but for, they're short about 1,200 employees on Amtrak and in class, in fact, the Empire Builder, they had to remove cars from the Empire Builder. It's sold out already for the summer uh, because there's not enough employees to maintain and move the trains. So if anyone's looking for employment, Amtrak is hiring. <laughs> to include for the second train here locally, the, con um, the second train will actually begin from St. Paul. And so if you are interested in being a conductor or engineer, they are hiring. Uh, if you've ever dreamed of driving a train, they are looking <laughs> for you. Uh, they need someone who is courageous uh, and bold and has a good attention span. Um, so probably rules most of us out, but <laughs> but they are they are looking for train drivers. And as soon as they get the employees, they actually could start the second train ahead of schedule, which is pretty exciting. Uh, that rolls me into an update with the Great River Rail. Uh, the Great River Rail is moving into kind of our next phase after securing funding for that second train. Uh, we're looking at how do we maintain operational funding as well with our partners uh, and building out the coalition of partners to expand the um, advocacy for passenger rail here in Minnesota. Uh, and, and one of the things that we've talked about for years but now we're actually going to make happen is that um, it, the first Thursday of August, so August 4th, we are planning a one-day trip to Milwaukee with Great River Rail partners and supporters um, and folks who want to get involved in passenger rail to experience the train itself the, um, and passenger rail. And then in Milwaukee, we'll be spending the day meeting with Wisconsin DOT, touring some of their other transportation first mile, last mile facilities. So you are all invited if you'd like to take a day on the trip. And if we have quorum, we will make sure it's posted uh, ahead of time. Uh, if you're interested, please let me know but it will be a it'll be a one day trip Thursday and back on Friday um, with stops along the corridor with our partners joining us on the rail um, to bring both um, information about passenger rail but also some learning and best practices with our partners to include Amtrak so um, good work happening there uh, we are ahead of schedule, which is unusual on a Tuesday, but we'll celebrate it. Our, our first workshop is at 10 a.m. and it will be here, uh, and um, uh, County Attorney Choi will be presenting, so we're at time certain at 10 o'clock. So we'll take a little break, uh, and then we'll turn it back over to Commissioner Ortega to lead that workshop. Uh, and then at 1.30, we'll have a workshop on the river balcony schematic design update, and that will be down in room 220. With that, we are adjourned. Wow. Did you see the